Hello and welcome to the Essence of Knowledge weekly meeting. These meetings are a part of the Essence of Knowledge program which is a free and online program for the seekers of the path of knowledge. Those who are interested in joining this program are most welcome to register at gyanmark.guru website. In this meeting I try to answer your questions, clear your doubts and we hold the test of the participants here so today we are going to start with a test of krish so the first question is what causes ignorance so, uh, compliant beliefs uh, in doctrination uh, whatever we believe from other sources uh, without verifying it by ourselves without critical thinking so these things uh, causes ignorance how is ignorance removed on the path of knowledge on the path of knowledge uh, we realize the essential truth uh, using the uh, valid criteria for truth um, we will uh, remove the ignorance uh, by verifying to direct experience as well as a uh, logic so by verifying our, our knowledge with direct experience and logic ignorance is uh, removed knowledge is dependent on memory which is changing and false so how is uh, knowledge reliable Okay. Knowledge is, is dependent on uh, memory. Uh, whatever is whatever we experience, we uh, we know it uh, because of our uh, memory. And whatever we experience, it is uh, always changing. So it is not truth. Uh, but the essential knowledge uh, uh, we in the essential knowledge so we remove all the ignorances uh, with all the knowledge which is uh, invalid which we cannot verify by our direct experience and logic we remove uh, those ignorances and uh, whatever we can verify, uh, which is uh, always existing, uh, never changing, it is the experience. So experience, experiencer is uh, always reliable because uh, it does not change. So that's how knowledge is uh, reliable in the uh, path of uh, knowledge. Uh, how to select the best criteria of truth so to select the best criteria of truth uh, it must be uh, always it must always exist it should uh, never change because if something changes uh, whether it is uh, changing uh, at fast pace or slow or even if it is changing slowly then it is uh, uh, then it doesn't uh, exist after certain um, uh, time. So if it is unchanging, uh, it always exists. So that is the truth. So the best criteria for of truth is that which uh, never changes. How is unknowing uh, better than knowing? Mm. Because uh, a knowing uh, when we know when we know something, the experience is always uh, changing. It is uh, always false. Uh, the unknowing means uh, there is nothing remain to be known. So it is uh, not that 
we cannot know that but it uh, but there is uh, nothing remaining to be known so nothing can be known about it so but knowing is always changing and it changes according to the uh, situation so unknowing is uh, better than knowing uh, nothing happens in existence true or false um, in existence uh, yes actually uh, nothing happens uh, whatever we experience is uh, also is the potential of the experiencer so an experiencer uh, does nothing it only has the uh, uh, infinite uh, potential so that uh, our limited sense can uh, make it uh, appear make the experiences appear but actually uh, nothing is happening it is only uh, whatever is happening is only an appearance because of the uh, infinite potential experiencer knows itself by the instrument of body mind true or false experiencer uh, Experiencer uh, cannot know uh, itself uh, by the body mind. Uh, experiencer uh, can uh, experience the uh, experience and and whatever. If if there is the experiences, then uh, there must be the experiencer. So it is. Uh, the awareness of the experiencer, we can uh, be the experiencer, uh, we cannot uh, know it, we can only be it. Why does awareness depend on the state of the mind? You know, awareness Awareness is the uh, knowing uh, that I exist. So, uh, whenever we experience something, uh, there is the experiencer which, uh, in which the experience is happening, which knows uh, the experience is happening. Uh, it actually does not depend on the state of mind. Uh, the experiencer is always there. Uh, even if uh, the mind is uh, not involved, experience experiencer is always there. Uh, awareness is just the knowing of the experiencer. What causes changes in experience? Uh, the changes in experience is caused by the uh, finite potential of the experiencer uh, because of those potential uh, changes keep happening and we come to know it uh, by the help of the senses which uh, limit the experience that we are able to experience so uh, yes, the uh, infinite potential got senses in the experience, and we can know it because of our uh, senses. If senses uh, does not uh, limit the potential that we can uh, experience, if it does not limit, then uh, there is nothing meaningful we can experience. Regular contemplation is a source of knowledge, mm, true or false. Uh, regular contemplation helps us uh, removing the ignorance, uh, going uh, deeper into the uh, essence of the knowledge. 
So regular contemplation uh, with uh, valid questions uh, is definitely a source of knowledge. Uh, these are my answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good attempt by Krish here. And you get uh, six and a half out of ten. That means you have passed. And six and a half is a um, decent score. Given the difficulty of the questions, it is considered a decent score. And uh, it is perfectly okay. You have the required knowledge to proceed to the step number four which is mostly about the awareness practice and uh, we'll watch you for three months, 12 weeks and uh, you will need to send weekly progress reports from the program website. So congratulations, very nice attempt, very good. Your written score is also very good. I think, uh, let me check, 9.35 is your average out of 10. Which means probably the program is already successful for you because there is nothing more in the program, nothing really difficult. The test is the most difficult part. So very good, good progress. And uh, now we'll discuss the answers to the questions where uh, marks were deducted. He got only one answer completely wrong and the rest of the marks were deducted for incomplete answers. So good performance actually. And if anybody has any questions, they can type it here so that I can take those questions so that you don't have to wait till I finish all the 10 answers. So all the questions are most welcome from other participants. So first question was very easy. What causes ignorance? And he got half mark because he gave the list of uh, the causes of ignorance and uh, why was half mark deducted <clears throat> because uh, some of the points in his list were simply synonyms of ignorance blind beliefs and all the these uh, indoctrination and all these are simply synonyms they mean the same thing as ignorance we are asking for the cause what happens so that the ignorance is stored in the mind? Remember, it is also in the memory, wrong relations, illogical relations, unverified concepts. These are all, they are formed and that is called ignorance. When a child is born, there is nothing much in the memory. There is no ignorance and there is no knowledge also because there is no need of knowledge. Knowledge is simply removal of ignorance. It is not addition of something. So we call that kind of mind innocent, not ignorant, innocent mind. So what causes innocence to turn into ignorance? I think a little bit was said in the program, but it must be your own experience that uh, surroundings, environment is a good cause. By good, I mean major cause, your environment. If there, you are surrounded by ignorant people, yes, it will be. That same thing will be imprinted in your mind. Indoctrination, yes. But that is probably nobody is indoctrinating a child knowingly. That let me indoctrinate this fellow and stuff ignorance into his mind. Nobody really thinks like this. It is simply they are passing on their ignorance. And the second major cause is absence of intelligence. This must be mentioned. Why do I believe everything that people tell me or whatever is on TV or whatever I read on read on internet? A little bit of intelligence is lacking. Initially, the child is innocent, so there is no need of intelligence also. Whatever you tell the child, he will simply accept because that is the natural state of a human being. We never doubt. And the intelligence or critical ability arises through training of the intellect. When we find that some things cannot be always true, then this doubt, ability to doubt arises critical thinking. Our education system fails to train students in critical thinking. The education system is very bad. Not only in India, it is overall in the world. The education system simply focuses on stuffing some information in the minds 
of the student uncritically in fact if you do not accept what they are saying there is a penalty there is punishment you fail in the exam in the school you don't get any uh, jobs so the student is trained to believe everything and critically it is a big problem we should teach students to think critically to get their own knowledge experiment instead of simply memorizing what others are telling if the child is very young yes probably he won't be able to do anything more than memorizing but after a certain age the teaching style should change and should become something like path of knowledge you based on direct experience and intelligence logic it happens in certain kinds of schools and colleges we call them um science oriented or you can say scientific institutions where experiments are taught where critical thinking is uh, taught but uh, that is probably less than 10% of schools and colleges institutions so because the training is very bad the pe- uh, these people they fail in these kinds of institutes also and there is no teaching about philosophy everything that is told is simply branded as truth and who does this kind of thing who makes the policies government and it is best interest of government to keep people ignorant and stupid so that they can rule them although this is a very extreme statement i should not say it like this there are some good governments also but the governments are also full of ignorant people they also lack critical thinking ultimately your only hope is path of knowledge and guru nothing else works current status is like this this is the cause of ignorance i gave a long answer for the benefit of everybody who is listening to the recording and all so that i don't have to tell it again and again however we have discussed this topic many times number 2 how is ignorance removed on the path of knowledge he got half mark again and he told that direct experience and there is a way good way but uh, Uh, that exact method is given in your program you may want to check it again it is never bad or a waste of time to listen to the lectures again they are just 10 minutes 15 minutes long and the exact method is listening contemplating abiding shravan manan nididhasan in sanskrit that is the exact method and we have refined it a little bit i have introduced writing exams purification and we you know made it eight or seven steps in it instead of three and there are more things than now in in the methodology of teaching exact definitions precise words pure language so on this is how we remove the ignorance there is no other way if you know a better way you are most welcome to send your feedback send your suggestions directly to me i'll try to incorporate them in the program as i am teaching i am gaining experience myself where people get stuck where things are misunderstood where my teaching fails that is my you can say practice sadhana how to teach better so we have tried to improvise the ancient methods but the essence is the same and yes setting the best sources of knowledge and means of knowledge we call them and criteria for truth these are historic i mean traditional we now nev- we cannot change them because if we change them then the path becomes uh, some other path it becomes corrupted so we can only improvise on what is so everybody should know what is the precise method of uh, path of knowledge number 3 knowledge is dependent on memory which is changing and false so how is knowledge reliable so he got no marks here the answer was wrong i know because this is a very difficult question this is a tricky question but the answer is very simple the knowledge is simply removing that which is incorrect in sanskrit we call it avidya incorrect knowledge is called avidya then vidya is simply removal of a vidya in the end we don't get any knowledge nothing is added uh, let us take an example knowledge is uh, interconnection of uh, stored experiences in memory suppose there is a kind of uh, interconnection that is stored 
which is like this i am body i am this physical body now it is ignorance obviously how is knowledge established there how is knowledge imprinted in that memory we simply remove this thing this notion that i am body it is replaced by i am not the body negative same same for everything i am not mind i am not any object i am not any process how is that this then direct experience and logic we don't ask you to simply believe because that will be another kind of illogical uh, imprint on the memory that will be ignorance so knowledge is ultimately removal of what is stored in the memory remember the memory is false it is illusion it is unreliable that is how probably it got the ignorance so purification removal of what is stored in the memory is knowledge nothing is added extra however you can find some things which are extra like words definitions new uh, terms and terminology and the art of reasoning and so on the, these are not knowledge these are things that assist in knowledge so as we know no memory no knowledge that oh, everything can go away and it goes away at the time of death or if the person becomes very old yes it's all gone no knowledge no ignorance you become that which you are so nothing changes in between only the ignorance is removed so always remember memory is not reliable it is changing and it is false plus there is no knowledge in strict sense knowledge is negative that is why in your program it is very clearly mentioned that uh, Uh, only negative knowledge is important on the path of knowledge positive knowledge is either ignorance or science knowledge of the illusion is positive but knowledge of illusion is also illusion we call it science or vigyan not gyan so i know this question is difficult i tried to answer it hopefully everybody understood next how to select the best criteria of truth and uh, he got 0.5 i mean half mark because uh, he gave uh, the criteria for truth which is unchanging immutable and uh, what the question is asking is how to arrive at this criteria it is not asking about the criteria itself which we have decided but he said that is the best criteria so i am happy yes it is best so i gave him half mark there is a way to arrive at the best criteria that is given in your chapter on nature everybody should go and rehearse you know review these chapters because they are the founding stones of the path of knowledge if you don't know how we are deciding these things then uh, the, the that which is standing on these foundations will be shaky it will shake one question then you will be confused knowledge will not be there so the foundation must be very strong so that is described in on the chapter on nature nature means true nature true and nature same thing so uh, we search for that which is same in all context remember this word context it is very important word context we search for that criteria which will remain in all the context which will provide us with reliable truth in all the contexts i'll give you an example because i am not seeing any questions here so i'm just explaining the answers example is let us say we choose a criteria that everything i see through my five senses is the only truth it is materialistic criteria obviously everybody knows whatever is coming from my eyes physicalize this on the face is the only truth i am going to call that as true it works very nicely isn't it these objects are true my food is true people are true world is true it is very good for survival now suppose you get pain in your head headache it is not coming from eyes you cannot see it is it true or false and the person who is in pain will say it is extremely painful it is true i please give me some medicine don't argue about true and false how is it possible now suppose you get an emotion you are angry or you are happy is it true or false this is not even in the body 
now again that person will be confused who has this kind kind of materialistic criteria our 90% life is mostly uh, mental emotional and bodily internals of the body hunger thirst who knows what and the objects are very less important so most of our life becomes false it the, the that criteria works only in case of objects physical world not for anything else so it is not a good criteria now you must include some things in the criteria you must revise your criteria now the pain is true hunger is true emotions are true thoughts are true so on but probably somebody will say that dreams are not true imagination is not true so there they draw the line so on we go on refining and uh, finally we find something which is true in all the states of the mind all situations all contexts and that is unchanging that is how we come to know what we are because we are that truth which is unchanging so this is probably the best discovery in the field of logic that we have extremely strong criteria of truth this happened in this country is it believe it is not believable isn't it it happened a long time ago number 5 how is unknowing better than knowing he got full marks because he said unknowing means everything that needs to be known is known simple knowing means you know something <laughs> there is a potential to know something and uh, what is known positive knowledge you cannot say that negative knowledge is i have it no i lost it that's all you can say if you want to say something so i lost my ignorance that's all we can say and that means unknowing that is same as unknowing so good answer nothing remains to know and always remember that we are not talking about positive knowledge or the knowledge of the illusion that is infinite and that is not necessary to know that is not essential knowledge number 6 nothing happens in existence true or false and his answer was right full marks nothing happens and he gave the justification for the answer also he said it, it all appears yes if it appears can we say it happened no we cannot we can only say it appeared for example your dream you became a millionaire in your, in your dream you became a king and you won a war and you killed people and so on you see you married 100 times but when you wake up did anything happen can you surely definitely say oh yes it did happen no it appeared like that nothing happened and your waking state is exactly the same <laughs> actually it, it is an appearance nothing is actually happening i know it is very difficult to accept because this creature itself is appearance it will never get convinced that nothing is happening anyhow truth is truth second argument is it takes time for something to happen it is very logical isn't it things start even start then they go through some time it takes some time change changes happen and something ends then we say it happened it takes past present and future but there is nothing like this it is totally a concept it is not even appearing the time is not even appearing it is simply measurement of changes no memory no time or the time is dependent on memory or we sometimes say it is mind created in ordinary language so if there is no time can something happen the answer is no nothing happens in the existence is existence totally static and the answer is again no it appears that there is activity something is changing so happening static not happening all these words are not relevant to existence existence means non dual existence that is me these words are not cannot be applied in case of existence so what remains there unknowing it cannot be known unknowable it is you cannot say anything more than that if you say static wrong if you say active wrong if you say dynamic wrong if you say something is happening wrong if you say nothing is happening that is also wrong because something is appearing it's not really happening so we can have only negative knowledge see this is a good example of how the ignorance is there and how it is removed through direct experience and logic so the point here is you must know why the experience 
is simply illusion you must establish you must prove it using the methods that that are given criteria for truth and so on and you must find out whether there is time or not you must establish that also through your own direct experience there is no point if you simply believe it that will not be called knowledge i remind you again and again because you are the students of path of knowledge probably i will never remind those who are not on any path sometimes we don't even tell them that <laughs> this is an illusion nothing is happening and nobody will really believe it telling people these things simply adds to their ignorance because they don't have the evidence for that so we don't even tell them uh, number 7 experiencer knows itself by the instrument of body mind true or false and uh, his answer was right that it is false statement statement is false because the experiencer knows nothing again knowledge is in the mind memory you can say the person knows something approximately you can say there is some knowledge there uh, plus the experiencer has no ignorance also the experiencer has nothing it has no ignorance also so what is there in the experiencer and the answer is very simple it is empty quality less so that they were talking about zero and uh, nothing so approximately or metaphorically you can say it is zero nothing that is the essence of the whole existence there is nothing so the experiencer has no need of knowing itself that is kind of a story that mind cooked up that is imposing human qualities on the experiencer which is not human which is the whole existence a human being has an uh, tendency to know isn't it we call it curiosity i want to know something i want to and then i i'll create some instrument to know i'll find some means to know and that is the person but the experiencer no thoughts no qualities you cannot impose our human activities on these things they are fundamental so it did not take form to know itself it's completely wrong notion it does not need to know <laughs> what it is sometimes we say it is self illumined means it simply is what is the need to know or be or what for example the sun does not need a lamp or a candle to see itself sun is light itself isn't it which candle will show the sun to the sun will it take a form to see itself impossible so same way existence is the experiencer there are no wants there are no needs there is no knowledge nothing why is there this body mind don't ask there is everything here don't impose a purpose on it there are all purposes here and there is no purpose also Ex- existence is devoid of all these human notions that is knowledge what kind of knowledge negative knowledge number 8 how why does awareness depend on the state of the mind and he probably found it difficult but he tried so i gave him half mark so remember awareness is also a state of the mind it's nothing nothing else it is simply remembering the knowledge who am i self inquiry isn't it so obviously it is simply activity in the mind and this activity is pure because the mind is not thinking that i am the body or i am something else or um, and the this world is true appearances are true it is not thinking all these things it is thinking about the truth it is thinking about the knowledge or it remembers it that is a pure state of the mind and obviously it will go up and down for example you go to sleep and awareness is gone is perfectly okay you see no loss unless you wake up with your old ignorance then we say nothing happened no knowledge happened so uh, if you wake up and again you remember whatever you have learned whatever is your uh, evidence whatever is your knowledge be in that immerse yourself in that that will be called awareness reminding continuous remembrance of who you are you are brahman was that's all needs to be remembered is it stored in the memory somewhere that i am this and that no it is direct in front of you what you are is here and now not in memory like he said in some answer that uh, experiencer is not dependent on the memory so it is reliable and so, that is how you see that that portion was correct 
that uh, when you are in awareness you don't need to search the experiencer in the memory somewhere in the past it is right here right now that's all we remember that i am here that is of called awareness the light is on that's what it is awareness does not mean that you uh, open a book or you go back in the program and start re- listening to the videos let me check where is the experiencer today that is not awareness so hopefully everybody understood it depends on the state of the mind that is why it is called a practice you will need to practice to remain in knowledge in the state of mind which is called awareness and do not try to find the definition of awareness in the dictionary or somewhere else this is our definition you can use any other word if you want like i used self inquiry you can use sakshi bhav you can use anything you like but awareness is standard number 9 what causes changes in experience he said uh, potential so he got 0.5 this question has double meaning there are two meanings and uh, that's why i got 0.5 because probably the question is asking why there are many kinds of experiences why it changes from this and that probably that is the meaning of the one meaning of the question so he said yes potential that is absolutely right there is infinite potential here it is not nothing but it is empty it causes all kinds of changes all kinds of experiences are here the second meaning is more interesting the question has an assumption that something is causing a change and that is wrong nothing causes any experience experience is also causeless and we have examined this thing in the basic analysis of the experience same as existence and experiencer nothing can cause experience so nothing can cause a change in the experience and the third thing the experience appears as change actually no changes are happening just like you said that nothing happens in existence experience is what it is the manifested or the visible part of the existence so nothing is actually changing here so three answers are possible at three levels anyhow think about this contemplate nothing causes changes in experience we should not assume that experience is one thing and something is changing it no it is me and i appear to myself somehow that is unknowable i am the experience also you see nothing causes anything the notion of cause and effect is meaningless for fundamental things number 10 regular contemplation is a source of knowledge true or false so he got full marks because he said yes you can learn something you can get some knowledge if you contemplate and that is why we have this as a practice or that is the method also listening contemplating and abiding but uh, the word used here is source of knowledge that means means of knowledge and you know already that uh, there are only two sources of knowledge direct experience and logic how come contemplation is a source of knowledge and many people will say especially the pandits advait pandits they will say no 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 it is not a source of knowledge sources of knowledge are two but you see contemplation is simply logical thinking it is lo- it is the logic part sometimes the logic does not take time i say it and it is obvious it is so simple sometimes but some things they take some contemplation to be understood logically especially for new people to get the evidence we need to think or meditate or contemplate discuss do questions and answers remove doubts that is contemplation nothing else loud thinking also you can say you start writing on the board or writing on the white board writing on a paper today's topic is this unknowing what can i know from this why it was called unknowing you start like this what is this contemplation so finally you get something finally your ignorance is uh, reduced destroyed so roughly you can say yes it is a source of knowledge but mostly it is a method of logical uh, deduction induction whatever you want to say logical um, thinking reasoning so still i gave him full marks because 
interpretation can change people can interpret these things differently there is no right or wrong answer here so here we finish the 10 questions hopefully everybody benefited because not only the person who is appearing for the exam gets the benefit those who are listening also get the benefit of these uh, questions uh, i always recommend contemplating on on these test questions in your free time and you will benefit a lot there is a difference a big difference between simply listening what was told in the videos or by me and uh, challenging yourself to answer something how much difference you see the difference is of day and night i can tell you my own uh, case that i learned mostly by questions and answers not by lectures or reading books you will find it amazing that in the ancient times in the ashrams the guru taught simply by questions and answers in dialogue and most of the upanishads are like this upanishad the word means sitting together and <laughs> discussing the student asks a question the teacher answers no lectures no videos no books no sanskrit tell me where is your ignorance and the teacher destroys it this is the traditional method this is most effective most powerful so far i have never seen anything better than this so I try to answer as many questions as you can seeing the importance of this we have uh, documented all the questions answers are not that important you know the answers isn't it i have documented i have collected compiled all the questions there are thousands now thousands of questions are there english and hindi mix infinite supply of questions is there so sharpen your knowledge on the questions you will listen something you will listen that thing this thing and you will forget but if you answer something yourself that is permanent this is a test of your knowledge if you get stuck at something that means knowledge is lacking there it is not logical some things are not making sense it is not very clear so questions are the way on the path of knowledge this is a good practice yes keshav is saying it really helps yes that is why our exams are also like this public it is helpful for everybody so do you have any question anybody you want to ask anything i'll wait for 2 minutes 5 minutes okay krish is asking what is diksha in path of knowledge and in general it simply means initiation the english word is initiation and uh, that means beginning when the student starts on a path he is initiated into the path now just to make an impression on the mind of the student because usually these are children these are very young mostly or they are innocent you know no scholar will get into the path of knowledge so to uh, make it a memorable event that yes you are to, from today you are on this path uh, some ritual is added in the in that uh, event so that you remember it just like your birthday first birthday or whatever birthday or your marriage day so that day you got initiated into something which is whatever but uh, now it is hardly anybody does it there used to be grand ceremony ritual and so on during the diksha or initiation and uh, there was celebration that's all some paths have uh, different kind of initiation and in some paths there is there are some extreme things are done for example they will uh, change your clothes uh, they will take away your shoes they will um, shave your head or they will change your name and these are all very helpful for the path some people don't like it now it is because you are all modern people isn't it <laughs> you don't want all these things drama so we reduced it now how how are you initiated on the path of knowledge in the essence of knowledge program you pass through the filter that is the step 1 that is your initiation and then you get the first word of the guru that is the last that is the last 
immediately i tell you there is nothing more to know this is the end of padapnal and mostly the diksha that happened in ancient time was like this the guru said something in the ear of the student and then the big process the long process of perfecting it collecting the evidence getting the experience it all starts cultivation purification everything starts so it is a start it is an initiation that's all it is anurakta is saying what is this feeling of emptiness it is like feeling empty from inside remember that is not our emptiness which is existence true nature of existence it is a mental state it can happen when uh, knowledge appears instead of ignorance what was ignorance i am the human being i am the body mind i have to do all these things these desires are mine i have goals in my life these people they are my relatives these are my friends these are not this world is true and i need to do these things in the world these people are good these are bad my country is good this country is bad see it was full it was full of stuff now you are on the path of knowledge what remains here nothing everything is shown to be totally useless and ignorance what you are is already complete and whole but it is also empty so nothing is gained so yes for few days the mind will say what to do now because the path of knowledge is the last path it does not give you anything to do for the rest of your life do this no nothing like this so your worldly goals are gone or they probably they are still there but they have lost the meaning they are meaningless now i wanted to marry i wanted to have children i wanted money i want this and that it all seems to be completely meaningless although it is entertaining <laughs> and learning opportunity but who will do that kind of hard work donkey work so nothing remains that is called bliss now because you don't know you have never experienced this thing before you will confuse it with meaninglessness goallessness purposelessness emptiness sometimes people will say depression it is like depression sometimes it is called bliss nothing to do nothing to be nothing um, to know no practice isn't this bliss you are eternal you there is no fear there is no anxiety she said i got anxiety it is perfectly okay it is a reaction of the mind the mind has lost its treasure of illusion because it was clinging to the illusion probably somehow deep inside it came to know it's all worthless now what should i do that is what it is thinking so these things can appear as anxiety fear or um, depression sadness or the person will become very very detached from everybody will not talk to everybody anybody will not eat will not celebrate um, there is no joy left in the life how is that possible <laughs> because the path of knowledge although it does not promise anything we do say that you will get the bliss you will get the peace probably some more things will happen like freedom and uh, liberation from the cycle of death and birth and all but these are secondary i mean who cares about all these things uh, but yes the peace will feel like emptiness will feel like loss of uh, life purpose and so on anxiety so my suggestion is simply watch it in awareness now you are in step number 4 where your job is simply to be aware be a witness of what is happening in the mind feelings thoughts emotions look at them the mind is doing this now mind is doing that now it is thinking this it is thinking this is what it is also a mental activity you are commenting there is no need to comment actually simply witness what is happening that is awareness what will happen ultimately it will go away it is a matter of few days the mind takes a little bit of time to adapt and then it is very you can say strong resilient it will adapt to the new situation it actually adapts to the knowledge also yes it is empty it is false so what i'll do whatever i want to do it says like this 
and it continues its natural life there's nothing wrong there is nothing wrong in living like a human being because how can you live like an experiencer the experiencer has no life an experiencer is simply there as a witness it has nothing to do it has nothing to live uh, no life to live so this body mind creature has a life it is perfectly natural that it will live it you must live in awareness the old will fall away i mean how long can you hold on to the ignorance and what whatever was stuffed in your mind how long can you tolerate that so you will need to give it a new life you will need to give a new purpose to the body mind so that it does not complain like this so everybody has is free to um, assign any purpose and usually a seeker will assign spiritual goal that is of evolution spiritual evolution that is climbing the ladder of um, forms you want a better form you don't want human form and so on you see some people will say service just like my guru brought me out of ignorance i want to bring other people out of ignorance service it is not uh, becoming guru you see nobody can become guru they can only serve so that is a different uh, topic i am not going to talk about it in detail but that is another life goal you can assign to yourself in the body mind there can be more like uh, some people want to study the illusion now there is nothing in the truth isn't it it's completely empty completely boring so they have this tendency to study the illusion and they become uh, tantric tantrics they create the illusion they want more illusion now and they become creators gods depending on uh, the tendency is present a goal can be given but you should not hurry about these things think about it right now you focus on your uh, practice only not on mental states and uh, probably after a year or 6 months something will come this illusion itself will give you something and mostly i have seen one thing comes that is fulfillment of pending desires somehow the old desires the arise back after knowledge after this this uh, interval of emptiness again there is something but the good thing is that will happen in awareness those desires get fulfilled quickly and some uh, unwanted desires they are dropped we say we we remain detached we simply see them they are coming and they are going uh, many things can happen it is not uh, completely boring life after knowledge if it is boring i'll give you something to do <laughs> and that, that is what i am doing you see my job does not finish after cert- awarding certificate people come back what should i do now so something is given you see it will be always be spiritual it will always be something which makes you progress evolve this creature because obviously the experiencer does not want anything so my session is to wait it will go away be aware of whatever happens in the mind and body and then get a new life goal spiritual purpose nothing else will be satisfactory so hopefully all questions are answered for today if you have any more you can ask me in the next meeting and we'll finish today's meeting here i'll see you next time thank you everybody for attending the meeting